Good morning everyone, welcome to Gateway Vineyard. It's so great that you came and to have you with us. My name's Lauren and I'm a pastor here at the church. This morning we're gonna have Mark Pinlot speak to us. He's an anointed preacher and this is the first time that he's gonna be speaking to our family. And in a moment, I'm gonna hand over to the band. But first, I'd love to just pray for us. God, thank you for this morning. Thank you for this day and for our family. God, thank you for the time of rest that comes with summer. I pray that this morning, as we start to engage um, back with, with normal life and coming back into school terms, that you would refresh our souls and our minds, that you would meet with us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now over to the band. Oh, 
Jesus.
is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy trust in Jesus' name. seems to hide his face I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil my anchor holds within Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. shall come with trumpet sound Oh may I then in him be found Dressed in his righteousness above Faultless stand before the throne shall come with trumpet sound Jesus, we praise you this morning and we thank you that no matter what comes our way, no matter what storms hit us, no matter the highs or the lows in our life, that you are our cornerstone, that you are our foundation, that you are the rock that we stand on, sure and certain that in you we are safe, we are loved, and we are free. Amen. Well, good morning, church. My name is Mark, and I'm an assistant pastor here at Gateway Vineyards, and you are so welcome to our online service. Um, if you've just recently started watching and joining us, then you're really welcome. Maybe you've um, moved to Norwich over the summer for work, or you're just coming back to university, or starting as a fresher, you are so welcome here. And we would love to connect and say hello to you. So 
To do that, you can share your details through the hello link that's on screen now, or you can email hello at gatewayvineyard.church and one of our team would love to be in touch and we can either arrange a, a coffee over Zoom um, or maybe we can arrange to meet up in person um, if we can facilitate that. And we can just share with you um, a little bit about the life of church and what's going on at the minute and also get to know you a little bit better and help you to connect in with others um, and be part of our community here. Well, listen, tonight is our next event that you can do that, where we get to hang out together and have some fun together. We're really excited about this. It's called Taskmaster Live, based on the TV show. And we're gonna put you into teams if you sign up through the link that's on the screen now. Um, we'll get you into teams with other households and we're gonna set you some wacky challenges that you can do in your own home. You don't need any special equipment, you don't need to prepare, and your um, high IQ or life experience may not help you with some of these challenges. So um, we're, we're looking forward to it. It'll be lots of fun having a giggle with each other um, and getting to know some other people. So we'd love you to sign up. We'd love you to invite your friends and family to sign up as well. We've got till 4 p.m. today um, before we close the sign up and send out all the rest of the details that you need. Great, well listen, if you wanna give as part of your worship today, you can do that through the giving link that's on the screen. Uh, you can do one-off or regular donations. You can give to our Compassion Project specifically, and don't forget that all-important gift aid if that's applicable um, for you. We love the extra um, little bit of money the tax man gives us back. Great. Well, listen, we really wanted to just share um, some stories really from Becca, who's been with us interning over the last year, and she has been such a blessing to us as a church um, in so many different parts of church life. Um, there's literally nothing she hasn't been involved with. Um, so she's been living with Lauren, and so we're gonna see an interview now. Um, and they live together, so it's legitimately okay for them to be in the same space and within two meters of each other. Um, but let's hear from Becca and see what God's been doing in her life over this last year. Hi everyone, I'm here with the lovely Becca. Hi guys. Who's been our intern for the year and you were meant to be here for six months. Yeah, and but then lockdown and happened. So yeah. um, stuck around for a year, which has been wonderful. Yeah, it's been so good to have you around. And you have been interning in what areas in particular? Um, lots, worship, compassion, mm. students, youth. I think that's it. Yeah. So there's been a lot within each of those, each yeah. of those areas. Worship, you've been doing some worship as well. I said that. Oh, that was you, the sorry. first one I said. Oh. <laughs> um, it's been so great to have you in those. And I'm sure God has done so much in each of those kind of ministry areas and throughout your year here. But is there one particular kind of standout moment for you um, as, you've, as you've been here? Mm, there's a lot, probably too many, but if I were to pick one, mm -hmm. um, I would probably go with DTI Nano. Um, that was with the youth. We went on a road trip up to Nottingham. Um, and we had loads of fun hanging out together. Yeah, that's um, good. Engaged with God in worship, yeah. and it was just so cool to see God moving in them, uh, in their lives, yeah. and them engaging with Him, and yeah. just really fun to get to know them more. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. Yeah. Okay, so if you could describe your year in five words, what would they be? Mm. Yeah, you've only got five words. Five words. Yeah. Okay, um, family, first one. Yeah. You guys are an amazing family and it's been a blessing to be part of you, your family. Uh, it's been a whole load of fun. There's been a lot of laughs. Um, also been a lot of growth for me um, and a lot of challenge. I'm going to go with those four. Fifth one. Um, I don't even know. And maybe like going deeper. Oh going yeah, deeper. Deep. Yeah, mm. great. Love that. Um, so, what have you enjoyed about being part of the Gateway family? Then we've kind of picked out one particular moment, but like as a whole, what have you loved about um, being part of mm. being part of Gateway? Um, yeah, I think just the thing that stands out by miles is just being part of the amazing community that is Gateway Vineyard. Um, you guys have just been so warm and welcoming and made me feel at home and part of the team, part of the family since mm. day one. Um, and it has been such a joy and a privilege to get to know so many of you through serving in different areas um, and just spending time and just getting to know how wonderful you are and how um, like you just have hearts of gold, honestly, such servant hearts. And um, it's been such a joy to be part of your community. 
We've loved having you. Thanks. So, can you tell everyone what are you going on to next and how can we be praying for you in the next season? Um, so, I will be starting studying graduate medicine at Oxford um, at the end of September and, yeah, moving to Oxford, um, yeah, also at the end of September. So, um, that's a four-year course, so it's going to be another long journey. Clearly couldn't get enough of studying the first degree I did, so... Um, yeah, I think prayer for the transition would be really great. Um, sure. I'm really sad to be leaving Norwich and leaving mm. you guys. Um, so, yeah, prayer for that grieving and also excitement for the next chapter and what God's going to do yeah. in it. That would be really yeah. great. Thank you. Great. Can we just quickly pray for you now? Yeah. Um, so if you're watching this and you're a part of our family and you've connected with Becca in some way, which I'm sure you probably have because she's been part of so much of what we're doing, then can you just pray with me now um, as we pay for her for this next season? God, I thank you for this incredible woman and the way that she has served and blessed our church community. Lord, would you just fill her with everything that she has given out to us? Lord, would you provide in the ways that she is asking? So would you help her in this transition and in the grieving? And would you provide her with an amazing church community who she can serve again with and will be family to her yet again, God? Just pray a blessing over the work that you're going to do and um, your studying and your house as well. Thank you for the ways in which God you have just provided um, with that home. Would you bless that home and would you bless this transition in Jesus name? Amen. Thanks again. Oh, Becca, thank you so much for sharing that. And we really pray that the Lord blesses you and what's next for you um, with your medicine studies. And um, we are so grateful for all that you've done um, and the seeds that have been planted and the lives that you've um, been involved with during this season. Excellent, well listen, if you've got a story you'd like to share about things that God's doing in your life, um, it could be big, small, whatever it is, we'd love to hear it. You can share those at stories at gatewayvineyard.church, email address, um, Drop the details in there, I'll be in touch, and we can talk about how um, you want to share that and how we can share that together um, to encourage others, because our stories are really encouraging to know that God's working in our lives um, and they can bring life to other people. Great, well listen, we're gonna continue our Armour of God series now. We've got Mark Pimlot speaking for us um, and with us this morning, um, which we're so excited about. Um, so Mark, why don't you take it away? Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to be able to share God's word with you this morning. And, and I know that his presence with, is with us and he's going to be a blessing to us as we unpack what God's word has to say this morning. Let's just bow our heads in prayer before we begin this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy upon our lives. Lord, we pray that you would be with us all now as we listen to your word, Lord, as we take in the promises of God. Lord, I pray as right from the onset of this talk, Father, I pray that you would strengthen and you would deepen our faith in you this morning. Holy Spirit, I just pray that you'd be with us in all your strength and all your power. Lord, open our hearts up to receive from you. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we continue in our series on the armour of God and I want to start reading from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 this morning and it says finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this age against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand and verse 16 says above all taking the shield of faith which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one not some of the fiery darts but all of the fiery darts of the wicked one you know i've been thinking a lot about this recently our faith is in a battle Every single day that we wake up, our faith begins to be put to the test. 
whether that happens with the people in the communities around us or with other different things or what's going on in the world today, all the disasters and, 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 and all the evil that's in the world today. And sometimes we find our faith put to the test. But I want to encourage us right from the beginning this morning that God has an answer. God has everything and gives us everything that we need to fight the good fight of faith and to deepen our faith and to encourage our faith in him. You know, whatever the enemy chooses to throw at us, we can be assured that God has an answer through everything, for everything. God gives us the weapons. He gives us the protection. He gives us everything which enables us to fight the good fight of faith. And I know we can put the enemy to flight is when we trust and we believe. That's our biggest weapon is when we trust and we believe in God, not in ourselves, but in him. What is faith this morning? You know, we look at it and we hear about it so much. But I think Hebrews chapter 11, the great, he, the, the great faith chapter, describes it in a perfect, perfect way. What is faith? It is the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us, even though we cannot see it up ahead. Wow, that's incredible. Then Hebrews 11 verse 7 talks about a guy who, who was in the Old Testament called Noah and the great faith that he had. And we read about this in the New Testament in verse 7 of Hebrews 11. Noah was another one who trusted God, who had faith in God. When he heard God's warning about the future, Noah believed him, even though there was no sign of a flood. Could you imagine it? It's probably one of the driest places on earth. And, and God tells Noah, build an ark. And Noah's going, what do I want to build an ark for? You know, it's a boat. There's no rain. There's no water around it. What's going to happen? But Noah did it anyway. And he said he wasted no time and built the ark. And it eventually saved his family. Through all the ridicule of the community around him. Noah still went ahead. He still built the ark. And God blessed him and saved the whole of his family. So when we look at the natural word of faith and what faith actually means in our speak or natural thinking, it means complete trust or confidence. It means firm belief, especially without logical proof. It means complete trust, confidence, and reliance. It means an unquestioning belief that does not require proof or evidence. It's allegiance to some person or thing. The faith walk that we are on, I pray that God will begin to strengthen us this morning. And even though we may feel weak, weak at times, I believe God is there just to strengthen us and to give us all that we need and you know when we begin to put our faith and our trust in God in action when we believe, begin to believe big when we begin to dream big that pleases God and when we please God he blesses is written throughout scriptures in our lives or that can come into our lives it's written there that he blesses and he is pleased with those who have faith and trust in him and it says in verse 6 of Hebrews 11, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Let's look at this shield this morning, the shield of faith. And many of you have seen the, the, the movies of Wonder Woman and also Captain America and a couple of them have this big shield that they wave about and everything the enemy throws at them, it bounces off. They can throw them. They can do all different kinds of things. But I'm not talking about those shields today. We're talking about the shield of faith. And, you know, Wonder Woman's shield or Captain America's shield was tiny compared to what we're talking about in context through the word of God. The shield of faith was big, or the shield was big. 
And it was wonderful. It was huge. And the measurements were, uh, of it were usually about four feet by two feet. And it was made with wood and covered with tough leather. And as a soldier, as he went into the battle with a shield held before him, held up, it protected him from all the enemy's weapons that they would throw, all the fiery darts, all, all the missiles or anything that they would come to him, they would bounce off the shield and the soldier would be protected. See, when we have faith in God, our faith becomes our shield. It becomes our covering. God gives us faith to stand up against the enemy and everything that he throws against our lives, God has given us faith to stand up for it to be our shield. And I just want to repeat this verse of, um, in, uh, of, of, of verse 12 in Ephesians 6 and it says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this, of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly or high places. This is the kind of battle that we face today. And I don't know about you, but if it's flesh and blood, we can almost somehow deal with it. But when it becomes spiritual and, and, and it becomes undermining in our lives, it's sometimes hard to fight. And I just want to bring out some of the things that we're facing that the enemy, he tries to push upon our lives and tries to defeat us in different things. You know, if we could put this into army speak and we would describe what this spiritual wickedness in high places means. When you look in and into it, it actually means that Satan's top generals are there in this battle with us. They're trying to strip us of our faith. They're trying to send us things into our lives that we have to fight off and that would try to destroy us and try to put us down. But as I said before, even the top generals, even Satan himself, we have the power through Jesus Christ. Through his shed blood, we have been given the power to overcome and to fight back and to repel every single lie, every single fiery dart of the enemy. We can do it through Jesus Christ. He has us covered he is our shield our faith in him is our shield doesn't that make you feel great this morning that you are protected from the enemy's attack because of your faith in Jesus Christ and when you look at it the shield that it says in, a, in Ephesians 6 it talks about above all taking the shield of faith that doesn't mean it has importance over everything else it means above all, is when you look at above all, it means to cover all. So you can imagine going into battle in those days and, and, and in the context which um, the Bible tells about this, is that any time they would face an onslaught from the enemy, the actual person or soldier could get completely behind the shield. It didn't matter what other armor he had, he was protected by the shield. He could duck down behind it. And it gave him total protection. So whatever came from the enemy, it could not touch him because the shield was there. I want to say this this morning. Faith covers everything. God gives us the ability through our faith to be covered. When we believe in him, when we trust in him, even though hell is coming against us in in, in such a powerful way, when we trust him, when we speak those words and say, God, I trust you. I don't know what's going on at this particular moment in time, but I have faith in you and I believe in you that I'm going to come through this in Jesus name. And there it is. It's our covering over our lives. See, the Apostle Paul, specific, Paul specifically mentions that the shield of faith is needed to defend against the attacks of Satan. Faith is a defensive weapon which protects us from Satan's fiery darts. And when we look at this in context, those fiery darts or arrows were dipped in flammable substances 
were ignited and they were shot at the enemy. And when they hit the enemy, they didn't off, they, above piercing the enemy's skin, what it used to do was used to set the whole person on fire. See, in this day and age, Satan shoots these fiery darts at our hearts, at our minds. And if they get through, they often pierce us, hurt us, put us into some kind of confusion. And they almost like set us on fire and try to destroy us. And all what comes with it are the lies, the blasphemous, blasphemous thoughts, hateful thoughts about others, ourselves, and doubts and burning desires for sin. See, if we do not by faith quench these darts, then we will be disobedient to God and his word and his will for our lives. See, we never know when the enemy is going to shoot darts at us. So we have to be prepared all the time. Every time we get up in the morning, we have to put the whole armour of God on. We have to raise the shield of faith and we do that by praying to him and say, Father, today, as I go out, Lord, I put myself and put myself 100% trust in you. All that I am trusts you. And as we put that prayer out there to God and we say that we trust him and we ask for his big faith in our lives, the shield begins to go up and it begins to repel all the fiery darts of the enemy. See, God fights for us. I'll say that again. God fights for us. Isn't that exciting this morning? He fights for us. We cannot do this in our own strength. We're too weak to do it. But God fights for us. All we have to do is hold the shield up and he will fight for us. All we have to say is, is this. Lord, we believe in you. I trust in your will and your way for my life. Strengthen me today. That's all we have to say. And I just want to encourage you with a few thoughts this morning on the shield of faith and and, and all those many years ago, when we talk about the Bible being the, the context of what God is trying to say or the context of this word. When we looked at the shield, we've already discussed that it was made of wood and covered in leather. But also what they used to do is they used to anoint them with oil. This used to preserve and to keep them together. The surface was kept bright with oil, which preserved both the leather and the metal See, what happens is the presence of God is called the anointing. That's what we know as the anointing upon our lives. When we're anointed to get something done, the presence of God comes upon us in a powerful way and anoints us to overcome and to get the job done. See, what the anointing, the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives, it preserves our faith. That's why we must continuously walk in the Spirit we must have a relationship with the Holy Spirit in our lives. We must ask him to lead us, to guide us, because he's the one holding our faith together. And I love this, what it says about the oil as well. When the shields were anointed, the oil helped the fiery darts of the enemy to slip or glance off the shield more easily. And I want to encourage us all this morning. We are anointed to go forward in faith. We are anointed to go forward. No matter the struggles, God has anointed you. He's put his presence on you. You are his servant. You are the, you are the one he, that he died for. He has big plans for you. So go forth in the anointing what God has put upon your life. And when you hold that shield up, when it's anointed, the enemy's darts will slip off the surface and they will have no effect upon your life. And the second thought I had about this this morning is faith is made strong in our weaknesses. That's the greatest thing about our lives that is in ourselves that we're weak. But through him, we have all the strength that we need. 
And we may be weak human beings, but through his spirit, through his word, through his power, we can overcome every single thing what the enemy throws at us. And I love what it says about the shield. The shield was always worn, when you look at it in context and when you study it, the shield was always worn on the left hand. Now, in in biblical terms, a shield is always classed as the weak hand. It was the right hand that that went on the, 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 the offensive with the sword. This was considered the right hand. The right hand was a place of importance. The Bible says, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies a footstool. The, the, the position of the right hand was power and dominion. But on the left hand, the shield was worn on the weakest side. And I love how it says this. I love how God has brought this all together and he's picked the shield, the shield of faith to be worn in our weaknesses. He's picked it to be worn on the left hand side, on the place of weaknesses. And that's totally opposite to what the human mind can actually comprehend and think about. You may think, well, that's the dark side to put up. If this is a weaker side, why do you want to put it there? Surely the sword would be better off in this hand. But God has placed the shield, the shield of shield of faith on the weakest side. So that speaks volumes to me. That means I know when I'm at my weakness, weakest, or when my faith is at its weakness, I know the shield of faith is there protecting me. I know that God is there protecting me and his power is all that I need to overcome the onslaught of the enemy. And I want to tell you and encourage you this, with this this morning that God has got your weaknesses too. God has got them covered. He's got the strength for you to overcome. The Bible um, talks about as well as in our weaknesses, he becomes strong. See, those fiery diets can take many shapes and forms because Satan is always looking for effective ways to attack us when we are weak. You know, that's a big thing in our lives. And, you know, we hear so many different things about great men of power and, and faith and You know, at particular times, we may not feel like that. We may feel weak. We may feel small. And, you know, we, you know, we may not even have enough strength to rip a wet tissue or or to crush a grape or 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 something like that. But I want to read you something that will give us a revelation of what God, how God can be strong through our weaknesses. And it says in Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. He says, because of the littleness of your faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed. Mustard seeds are absolutely tiny, really, really, really small. I'll read on. And this is wonderful. It says, if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there. And it will move. Isn't that incredible? And nothing will be impossible to you. The faith, the size of a mustard seed can move a mountain. We have it covered. God have it, has it covered upon us. He's there when we need it through every single circumstance of our lives. And the last one this morning is, when we're talking about the shield of faith, we're talking about one, our shield is anointed. Number two, our faith is made strong in our weaknesses. And number three, we are all in this together. So I want you to get something this morning. When you look at the history of these shields and the context it's in, the edges of the shields were so constructed that an entire line of soldiers could interlock shields and march into the enemy like a solid wall. And I want to say to you this morning, doesn't that suggest to you that we're not in this alone? One of the greatest strengths of the body of Christ is that we're together. We should be in unity to go forward, to face and to fight this battle. Together we are strong. 
When the saints come together, when we as Christians, we come together and, and, and we believe in God and we have trust and faith in him. When we are locked together, going forward, we are indestructible through the blood of Jesus Christ and through his strength. See, don't do life on your own. Sometimes when we're going through hard times, we can maybe isolate and we don't see anybody or we keep ourselves to do, to, do, to, to keep ourselves to ourselves, but it must be the opposite. We need to get around our brothers and sisters. We need to gain strength from them. We need to lock shields with them going forward against the enemy. You know, I have many times in my lives when I feel felt weak, I've had people come and pray with me. And as they began to pray with me, as they begin to, to, to seek God's will for my life and, and, and to come and to encourage and to strengthen me, what we've actually done is lock shields. And we've gone forward and in those circumstances, we've defeated all that the enemy could throw at us because we joined together. Have people come and pray with you. Have people come and talk to you. Have people come to, to encourage you. Meet up with people, talk about God, talk about faith, encourage your faith within, with, with, with each other. The Bible talks about the iron sharpens iron. We get more stronger, we get more powerful through when we talk about faith. See, we trust and we should trust in the promises of God. The more we know about the shield, the more we know that we're anointed when we carry it, that it preserves us when, and it looks after us. And we can join together with other people, the greater our faith becomes. See, when this stuff happens, when, when we lift the shield of faith, the confidence in ourselves begins to go and confidence in him begins to increase. I want to say a quote here this morning by Mary Kay Ash, and it's, it's quite funny, but it talks about something being taken away from, or let's put it another way, our confidence, our self-confidence being taken away and just going for it. And it says this, aerodynamically, the bumblebee should not be able to fly, but the bumblebee doesn't know that, so it goes on flying Anyway, let me read that again. Aerodynamically, the bumblebee shouldn't be able to fly, but the bumblebee doesn't know that, so it goes on flying anyway. You know, without faith, is it impossible to please God? Without faith, it is impossible to go forward. Without faith, it is impossible to fly. When we take away our self-confidence and looking at us and our weaknesses, and we look to him, the author and the finisher of our faith. We look to him, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, our confidence and our trust and faith is in him. Then we begin to fly. See, having faith in God releases you into boldness. You then begin to do great things you thought you could not do. You start to move in circles where the miraculous becomes an everyday occurrence because of your faith in him. Again, not forgetting if we have such a small amount of faith, we don't have to have big faith all of the time. The mustard seed. Jesus said, if you say to the mountain to be removed, it will be moved. That's how small a faith we need for miraculous things to happen. God just wants us to have faith in him. And in closing this morning, I just want to say this. What lies behind us and what lies before us are tiny matters compared to what lies within us when we have faith in God. And I just trust this morning as you've heard the word of God, as you've heard his strength and as you've heard his blessing, I just pray that it will just be all that you need this morning. And wherever your faith is, wherever your trust is, God is there. He's a strength 
and he's a shield to you. All we have to do is believe and we have to trust. All we have to do is just lift that shield and God will fight for us. God will be there. God will enable us to overcome every single thing that the enemy chucks at us. And I just pray that God would strengthen you. God would give you bigger faith. God would touch your lives, that the Holy Spirit would empower you to overcome all that the enemy throws against you. God bless you. We are so glad that you've been able to join us for our online service. There's no Zoom lounge now until September, but if you are new to Norwich, new to Beckles, you're looking for a church, maybe exploring faith and wondering how you can participate in church community, then why don't you drop us an email at hello at gatewayvineyard.church and one of the team would love to connect with you, say hi, maybe have a virtual coffee and tell you a little bit more.